Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the EMU Review. And I've sat and I've thought about this. And when it comes to gaming, technology, gadgets, all that sort of thing, you come here. Why do you come here? Well, because I am like your gaming gigolo. Yes. Yes, this is true. I know you're asking, well, how is this possible? Well, it's simple, friends, because I go out, I work the corner, I do my due diligence, I do my research, I put in the work, and after the hard work's been done, after the games have been played, after everything else, I come back and I give it all to you without hesitation. You guys are like my my gaming pimps, and I'm like, I'm I'm like Jason the Gigolo. I'm like your personal gaming gigolo. It's simple. That's exactly what it is. You love it. I love doing it. This is the EMU review, and we don't mess around with it. So blow to your face. Well, let's not waste any more time on my epiphanies, but let's cut right to the chase here with today's review. I am reviewing the awesome, the over-the-top fighting game in 1993. This is Mortal Kombat 2. People were still loving Mortal Kombat 1 in the arcades. One year later, just under a year later, Midway slams out Mortal Kombat 2 in the arcades. They like snuck it into the arcades. I remember I showed up, I went to my Mortal Kombat machine, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's a new machine, and it's Mortal Kombat 2, and it is absolutely ridiculous. It is over the top. For one, the cabinet is just absolutely amazing. The side art, it's got Raiden on the side, incredible looking. But not only that, the cabinet was bigger, wider, louder. The colors were more vibrant. It was just the biggest, baddest cabinet in the arcade, period. And then when it really comes down to it, I mean, do you think they were not going to release a sequel? I mean, Mortal Kombat was so successful. Not not just in sales, but stirring the pot in controversy in the fighting genre and all the firsts it brought to the world. It was mandatory that they release a second and they went all out on this one. It is unbelievable. And as the common rule, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But if you can improve it tastefully, please do. And they did. They absolutely did. There isn't one spot in this game that has not been improved tastefully. Honestly, I can't come up with one thing that they did to this game that is negative in comparison Comparing it to the first, let's just get right into it and talk about the development. Similar to the first, they placed characters in front of a gray background where the characters then performed all the motions. Characters were recorded with Hi8 videotape. If you don't know what that looks like, it looks like this. I've got a, it's just a gank load of these things. My whole family used them for home footage throughout the years. I mean, this process was updated from the first in what they call broadcast quality. The footage was then imported into the computer, backgrounds were removed, and then they created 64 or 128 color sprites. The characters were also lightly sprayed with water to uh, to help make flesh tones stand out and muscles pop out. And to tell you the truth, at the time, there were no other games out there with this realistic looking characters. The motions are just so fluid. The characters look amazing. They pop out. You honestly really felt like you were that character in the game. It was quite incredible. Another huge thing that helped with the gameplay is that they increased the frame rate and speed of this game. The gameplay is just super fast. It makes the rounds go by so quick and so intense. You really had to think in this game. And if you weren't on your toes, you just get owned. Simple as that. Okay, now the characters and their moves specifically remain the same from the first, except for a few moves that were either modified or added, like now you could punch while crouching, and the roundhouse kick's damage was increased quite a bit. Now they actually will fly across the screen. It's one of my favorite moves to use. I don't know, I just love it. I think because it sheds the same amount of blood as an uppercut. And I just love that. So each character moves and jumps and walks exactly the same speed. There's no handicap on any of them. The only difference is either their fatalities or their special moves and how to perform them. And since we're on the topic of characters, let's introduce the new characters in this game. Baraka, Jax, Katana, Kung Lao, Melina. Although Sub-Zero is not a new character, this is Sub-Zero from the first Mortal Kombat's brother. If that makes sense, it's a family affair, kids. Not sure where the uh, older brother is. Probably out in Iceland or something kicking it. Who knows? But either way, this new Sub-Zero looks totally different, totally better, and on top of it, he can freeze the ground right in front of you and make all your opponents slip and slide on it to a nice, warm, hot cup of uppercut, baby. So the returning characters are Johnny Cage, Liu Kang, Raiden, Reptile, Scorpion, and Shang Soon. You're like, you're all like, wait a minute, Shang Soon is now a playable character? So that was insane to see a final boss in the first one, now a playable character. Yeah, I tried it out a few times, couldn't figure anything out. So I was like, yeah, I'll just go back to my uh, Sub-Zero. And Sub-Zero was good. 
then I was like, you know what? Who's this dude with all these blades coming out of his arms? Yep, that's the guy I want to be. Edward Scissorhands. Baraka and I, we are kicking it. We are going to arcades together. We are hanging out. You know, we are having picnics together. We are doing all kinds of shit. I love that guy. You know, it's because he has the best move in the game. When he does his scissors back and forth, he gets down on one knee and he turns into the paper mache aisle at Michael's. Slicing and dicing. If you're anywhere near those blades, man, it's just a bloodbath. And I loved it. I loved how the blood just flew everywhere and the scissor chopping sound. It's just classic. I can't use it enough. I want to use it all the time. I, I just want to sit there and just the whole time just... Just chopping people up. Oh, throw some cheese, throw some hamburger in there, you know, throw some chips, make some taco salad. Mmm, that sounds good. Baraka, get your ass in here. Okay, so we have these new bosses now. We have uh, Kintaro, and we have Shao Kahn, who is emperor of the outworld, evidently, and then Kintaro is his bodyguard. So whatever their purpose may be to take over the world, I'm sure that's what it is, but I honestly do not care about it because I just love playing this game. I don't really care what the single player campaign, whatever's got to offer, or who we're fighting at the end. All I know is that this is a definite two-player all out bash. It is awesome to get you and your buddy on the cabinet and just rock and roll. Okay, and lastly on the characters, we have a few hidden opponents now. We have Jade, Nude, Nude, <laughs> Noob, Cybot, which is awesome. His name's Noob. That's just classic. And then Smoke, who looks like a, you know, scorpion type smoke person. And then Sonya Blade and Kano, they're all like tied up on a few of the maps. It's pretty crazy to see. I mean, I don't know what the hell happened to them. They didn't pay their rent and didn't bring back the right food from Wendy's. I mean, who knows? Either way, they're tied up and they cannot be played in this one. I'm talking about everything. Everything has been improved on this game. Every single section of this game has been improved. We talked about characters. We talked about game and game design. We talked about the cabinet. We talked about frame rate, speed. There's a whole host of new characters and hidden characters. And another huge thing here now is that every character not only has one, but two fatalities that they can do to their opponent. I mean, I love it. They're just like, listen, you guys love doing that? Great. Well, how about two of them? You get to pick. It's just awesome. Now you can kill your opponent depending on your mood. Something I think all of us have always wanted to do. And on top of that, they have crazy, crazy finishing moves like Babality, where they turn your opponent into a baby. The baby cries, and it plays this little baby music. Oh, what an insult. I've seen fights break out at these arcades when they would do Babalities. It was quite insane, actually. Then they also have friendships, where you can uh, give your opponent something to make up from the fight that you just had. I'm sorry I just whooped your Here's a present. And that, my friends, is epic. And now now, instead of just one pit level, there was a total of three, where you can knock your opponent into toxic ways to ooze stuff. It just completely incinerates their skin, knock them off of the pit, slam onto the ground, back first. It's amazing. It's my favorite one. Or you can also knock them up into spikes, where they get stuck up in the top of the screen. That's pretty sweet. Now, another place that they improved enormously is within the sound. All the music was composed, performed, recorded, and mixed by Dan Forden, who is the Mortal Kombat series sound designer and composer. Even for for a short period of time, while the game was idle going through its attract mode, it would flash this promotion to mail in for the soundtrack for Mortal Kombat 2. I always wanted to do it, I just never did. Stupid me. Because at the time, I think it was like five or ten bucks with shipping to get it. And now if you have one, you can sell them on eBay between 100 and 150 bucks if they're even on there. They're very, very rare. But getting back to the sound, this is the first arcade game to use the DCS stereo sound system. DCS stands for Digital Compression Sound. I should do an episode just on this. This is a very, very big thing here. But the technology is this in brief. With the use of the soundboard, instead of having just a stereo image, a left and right channel, now you can have up to four plus channels of audio. Amplified mono signals. So yeah, you can break it up now. You've got one channel for sound effects, one for music, one for background and foley, one for whatever. You can break it up. You can have four channels. This is an incredible thing. That is why this sounds so good. You have specific amplified mono channels supplying the sound. There is no doubt that with when this game came out, it was designed to be bigger and badder than the first, and there is no doubt that it achieved that. Everything is just so polished on it. I mean, yeah, with all games, you have different revisions and, you know, different versions of it, because there's glitches here and there, which there are. People have come out and made different hacks for the game. You can have longer fatality times, you know, different stuff like that. Fight the bosses first, but wow. In 1993, does it really get any better than this? And the answer is no, it does not. This is the cream of the crop fighting game. You know what? Even today, it holds up very, very well. You'll find people all around the world that love this game, want to play this game, and collectors want the arcade game. And I am proud to say that I do own a Mortal Kombat 2 dedicated cabinet. I 
also have two different EEPROM versions of it. I have the original and the Mortal Kombat Challenger EEPROM. Mortal Kombat 2 is a game that is in history as one of the best fighting games, period. So, the EMU review grade for Mortal Kombat 2 Arcade. This game gets an A+. When you roll by that corner and you see me stand out there in my thigh highs, just know I'm doing it for you. The EMU review wins.